In 2022, REITs saw their share prices drop by right around 30% on average, and many of the smaller and lesser known REITs dropped by even more than that. As a result, now you have a lot of REITs in the small cap segment of the market, trading at really large discounts to the net asset values. But which one of those are the best opportunities? Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run an investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about three small cap REITs that we are buying at the moment at Leonberg Capital. But before I get into it, could you please make me a favor and like this video? I just recently created this channel and it will help me a lot. Thank you very much. So the first REIT I want to discuss here is called Whitestone REIT. Its sticker symbol is WSR. This is a small retail REIT that invests mainly in service-oriented strip centers. Try to imagine your local grocery store that you probably visit on a weekly basis. Uh, it probably has a grocery anchor and then it has some other smaller tenants like a nail salon, a barber shop, some quick service restaurants, maybe a gym, a dry cleaner. They invest in this type of properties and today it's heavily discounted trading at a roughly 30% discount to our estimate of its net asset value, uh, also at just around 10 times its, uh, its cash flow. And we think that the market is discounting it so heavily because this is a small REIT, it's investing in retail, which is out of favor. Uh, the REIT has also had some management issues in the past, which we'll discuss a bit later. It has a bit more leverage than average. But I think what the market is here missing is quite important. It's that these assets are mostly located in rapidly growing Sunbelt markets like Fiat, Phoenix, uh, Houston, uh Austin and these markets have grown really significantly during the pandemic and they continue to grow today and as a result Whitestone is now able to hike its rents quite significantly as its leases expire. In the most recent quarters it has had releasing spreads of right around 20%. Uh, at the same time the REIT is now focused on deleveraging the balance sheet. Its debt to EBITDA is around eight times at the moment which is still on the high side but before the end of the year they expect to be already down to below seven times which is quite a bit stronger. The, the management issues of the past have also been resolved now. Um, this rate used to be managed by a CEO who was conflicted and overpaid, but he was fired for cause, the board did its job, and the new management team is really, really good. I've talked to them quite a few times on the phone, and they are laser focused on now creating shareholder value for the company, and I think that they will achieve that by simply deleveraging the balance sheet, building this track record of rent growth, and just return to its net asset value, the share price will need to rise by around 50% and while you wait you earn a 5% dividend yield. So the second REIT I want to highlight here is called Armada Hoffler. Its ticker symbol is AHH and this is a small REIT that owns a diversified portfolio of apartment communities, service-oriented retail just like Whitestone and then some office space as well. And today the market is discounting it quite heavily, pricing it at around a 30% discount to its net asset value, around 11 times its uh, cash flow. And I think at that it's priced at such a low valuation because the market fears the, the retail and the office. And then on top of that, uh, the REIT market will typically punish REITs that have diversified portfolio because it prefers REITs to specialize in one specific sector to become a real expert in that and create value for shareholders. But what the market here appears to have overlooked is that Armada Hoffler has been building up its portfolio of apartment communities and, and so it's not yet a pure play apartment REITs but it's slowly becoming one already today around 50% of its portfolio as measured by its net asset value is invested in apartment communities. Uh, their rents are growing rapidly at the moment and so I expect this to keep on rising. They also have quite a few uh, development projects on the way should, which would again increase its uh, allocation to apartment communities and, and so I think that over time as this becomes a quasi apartment REIT uh, its valuation will will have to, to expand. Today you get to buy it at 11 times cash flow but apartment REITs of this type typically trade at closer to 20 times FFO its cash flow so, so that's nearly the double. If we now see in the coming years its uh, apartment uh, allocation increase. I think it's quite probable that we see its FFO multiple expand closer to 50 time, 15 times FFO. That alone would uh, would provide around 50% upside from here. And while you wait, you earn a 6% dividend yield. 
And then finally, the third REIT. This one is the most heavily discounted relative to its net asset value. It's today priced at just around half of it, so 50% discount. Its name is Clipper Realty. Its ticker symbol is CLPR. And the market is pricing it at such a low valuation because this is a small REIT that's almost exclusively invested in New York City. And uh, New York City is today out of favor. I'm sure you've seen the media headlines of people and companies leaving New York to move to Texas or Florida. And so the market is quick to extrapolate this far into the future, expecting eventually rents to start declining, occupancy rates to start declining. And, and so because of this, a REIT like uh, CLPR is today out of favor. But I think what the market is today overlooking is that first of all, New York City has gone through many crises in the past. It has always bounced back and recovered stronger than ever. And so I don't think this time is going to be different. Uh, this city is just like companies move through cycles. Uh, they, there is some pain, but after the pain, things get better. And I I think that New York City is again going to surprise the market and eventually bounce back. And then the second thing that the market is here probably overlooking is that CLPR is mostly invested in affordable apartment communities in Brooklyn and Manhattan. And these properties remain in high demand even through more challenging times because they provide affordable housing. This is class B. It's not the top end of the market, which is going to experience more pain through a down cycle. This is the, the affordable section, which has consistent and strong demand. And so even today, the rents of CLPR keep on rising. Occupancy rights remain really high. And uh, the, the management now is trying to unlock value by selling some of its assets, probably to pay down debt and buy back shares. The management itself is very heavily invested in the shares of the company. They are the biggest uh, shareholders. And so I'm confident that they will find ways to unlock this value over time. Uh, to return to its net asset value, the share price would need to almost double. If you account for a moderate decline in its property values, you will still get a lot of upside from here, probably closer to 50%. And while you wait, you're in a near 6% dividend yield. So once again, I think the risk reward is very attractive here. And so these are three small cap REITs that I'm buying at the moment. If you want to learn more about what else I'm buying, feel free to take a two week free trial to my REIT newsletter called High Yield Landlord. I'll put a link in the description. You'll get immediate access to my entire REIT portfolio. And otherwise, please like and subscribe. If I can help with anything else, let me know in the comment section below. See you at my next video. Bye bye.